everyone, welcome back to my channel. I've previously shown how I convert my DSLR film scans from negatives to positives, but I've recently come across a new Photoshop action script sort of thing that does a really good job of it. Um, I'll leave a card up here to show you the way I was doing things if you want to try that method. But this new script is, is pretty good. I think it's pretty good anyway. So without any further ado, let's just jump into the computer and I'll show you how it all works. So we're now in Photoshop and this is the fourth time I've recorded this because of audio issues that I've been having. Um, hopefully I've got all those sorted out now and this is the last time I have to record it. Um, I'm not going to show how to install this script, um, which is called Grain to Pixel. I'll leave a link below to the Grain to Pixel website and it has all the information that you need there to get up and running. This is just going to be a quick overview of how the program works. So when you install the script you'll also set up an action to launch it so i have that set up here under g2p launcher you click on that and it brings up this dialog box which has all your options in it you can see here grain to pixel by the dude first thing you need to worry about is this up here whether you choose digital raw and DNG files which would be from your digital camera or if you're using a flatbed scanner you'll choose linear TIFF files. My files are from a Nikon D750 so I'll be choosing digital raw. Then we go into files setup and this is where you choose your source files and where they save. So I'm just going to go to my desktop choose these files and then you can save it in the same location um, if you want a custom subfolder or not I have that set up or if you have another specific folder that you save all your file conversions to you could choose it here I'm just going to save in the same location then we go over to the conversion setup tab where you can choose to use the grain to pixel engine. I just leave that on because it does a good job. Then you have your color cast removal. I leave it on smart, however, I've found that works for most films. However, if you're using something like a cine still or you've really underexposed or overexposed your film you might want to choose extra but from what I've done smart seems to work pretty good and I leave the auto light balance on as well which seems to do a good job and then post conversion you can generate a contact sheet which I think is a pretty cool thing that you check out all your scans on one little contact sheet you can quickly see what what's there without having to open up each individual file which I think is pretty cool and then there's also you can also run three other actions so these drop down boxes on the left hand side are the folder that your actions are in and then the ones on the right hand side are the action that you want to run. I have a remove saturation action for when I'm doing black and white films because I found some films had a slight color cast. So removing the saturation just removes the color cast and then as you can see here I also have some toning actions which I occasionally use. Um, but you can set it up to run three separate actions. One thing I found 
as well. Your action has to end on a flatten layers. Otherwise, you will just get, from what I've found anyway, a white frame on your contact sheets instead of your actual photo. Um, I don't know if it just picks the top layer, whatever that is, and puts it on the on the contact sheet, but I would just set your action up that you use for this, whether it's a sharpening action or removing saturation, as just it flattens it afterwards, and that seems to work okay. But we're scanning color negatives, some C41 negatives, so I'll just leave these actions off. And now that it's all that's left to do is to click on run and it'll start doing its processing and then it will come up with this film based sampling dialog box. If you are converting files that are from the same roll of film you can just click on yes. However if it's a batch like I've chosen here that they're all from different rolls of film and different film stocks then you click on no. If you click on yes, it uses the first frame as the film base value and just repeats it for every file after that. Um, I'm just going to click on no and then we can just watch it do its thing. So you can see down the bottom here, it tells you what file it's on when it comes back up and how long the last file took to process. Um, so the first one is always longer, it takes 56 seconds and then the next file is 12 seconds. You can also see the contact sheet being made as well. I'll just I'll just speed this up and let it run. Okay, so this is now finished. I'll close this window. Close that one off. You can see the contact sheet here. Um the photo of my daughter with the dinosaur at Australia Zoo was taken on Pro Image 100, I think, as well as this one here, I think, is Pro Image 100, and the others, I think, were from a roll of, or a couple of different rolls of Kodak Ultramax 400. Um, this bottom one might be. Pro Image 100, but I'm pretty sure it's from Ultramax as well. Um, we'll just go back through the different files, so you can see this one here. I just think it gets the colours really, really well. So you can you can see the difference in the film stocks, which is good. It's not taking away from the look of the film stock. One thing I wouldn't do if I, unless you've got a whole heap of RAM in your computer, would be to leave the files open like this, because it takes takes a fair bit of RAM, especially if you're saving to TIFF. So I would make sure that that box is unchecked, unless you are just bringing in a couple of photos and then you want to do some levels or curves adjustments you, if you want to increase saturation or anything like that um, then you might want to do that but I would just leave it as is if you're scanning a whole roll leave it turned off so it was going to pixel um, let me know what you think in the comments 
Is it something you'd use? If you do end up using it, throw a link in the comments to where I can have a look at the photos. I'd love to have a look at photos you've converted with that program. But until next time, guys, you guys know what to do. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.